Hello story chasers and welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Amber and I travel full time in my van. This is actually my fourth year. My first year I traveled in a Class C Winnebago and then the last couple of years I've been traveling in this van behind me. It's a Class B Hymer Active van. It's on a ProMaster 2500 chassis. And all of my videos are about my solo travels around North America and all the ups and downs that you encounter in nomadic life. So if you like that kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like that. And I also started a Sunday segment where it's about kind of cooking in the kitchen in this minimalist kitchen and how I've been losing weight. I've lost over 70 pounds since I started RVing. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my Sunday video series. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about tire safety and why you should have a tire pressure monitoring system on your RV or your van. This is our home on wheels, so we need to make sure that we are maintaining our tires, keeping them in good working condition, and maintaining the life of those tires with some very easy, simple tips. I have nine, nine? <laughs> I have nine of them for you. All right, guys, let's get started. So tip number one is probably one of the most important tips ever. Each RV van vehicle has what's called a GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating. That is the maximum weight your rig can be without any issues happening. So what I mean by that is we need to make sure that our van or our rig is below that weight. I like to make it significantly below that weight because I like it to be where I can add things to the van if I need to and not have to worry about going over that GVWR. So the way that you can make sure that you are underweight or not overweight on your GVWR is go to a local truck stop. Usually they have what's called CAT scales, C-A-T, exactly how it sounds. Truckers use them a lot to weigh their rigs and you can do it also. Don't be afraid to go up to the scale. You literally just have to drive up to the scale, hit a little button to tell the person that you're ready to weigh, they clear everything out so that it's zero on the scale and then they weigh your entire rig and they'll actually give you the weight rating for your front axle and your back axle as well. So it's a great tool to use. I check it about every six months to once a year, unless I've added something significant to the van. I generally know that I'm about 1,200 to 1,500 pounds underweight on my van. So it's really important that you do that. If you don't do that and you're overweight, it definitely compromises those tires. It's too heavy on the tires and it could potentially lead to a blowout. So you wanna be really, really careful about that. All right, so number two is checking your air pressure and checking it regularly. You wanna make sure that your tire pressure is exactly where it should be based on the tire rating. So my tires, for instance, because of the, the specific tire that I have and also the weight of my vehicle, mine is supposed to be at 65 PSI on the front two tires and then 80 PSI on the back. Usually you'll find a sticker on the inside driver door that shows you exactly what your tire pressure should be. So that's really, really important. And one of the things that I have, I carry with me this air compressor. I didn't always have it and I decided that it's probably best that I do get one because I am on the road a lot. I've usually been with people who've had one and I just would use theirs, but you know, in case I'm ever out there by myself, which happens quite often, I do need an air compressor. All right, so number three is to check your tire temperature. Just like when you're checking your air pressure, you should check your tire temperature as well. Now, most vehicles that we have out there, they don't actually monitor your tire temperature. My van in particular does not allow me to monitor my air pressure on a display. A lot of passenger vehicles these days actually have that, but this did not come with that option for some reason. So there's an actual sensor on it that tells you if you have low pressure in a tire, but it doesn't tell you which tire that actually is. So that's another great reason for getting a tire pressure monitoring system because it will actually monitor your air pressure and also your temperature. And the reason why you wanna make sure that your temperature is okay on your tires is because if the temperature gets too high, too hot on your tires, it could actually lead to a blowout. So it's nice to be able to monitor that while you're driving so that you can avoid any issues like that. So number four is to actually check the tread of your tire. You wanna make sure that your tires are not going bald and that you don't see any kind of wear in specific places that could cause a blowout. 
you don't want to see any threads nothing like that if you're seeing that you definitely need to replace those tires so do the penny test if lincoln's head does not go into the tire tread then that means your tire tread is too low and you definitely need new tires all right, so number five is to check your tires frequently. Go in and inspect them. Make sure there's no punctures in them. There's no cracks. There's no nails in them. When we're out here on BLM and National Forest land, we tend to like run over rocks a lot. And unfortunately, there's tires and screws and various things like that. When I was in Flagstaff, if you saw that video, I actually had a nail in my tire and I had no idea it was there. Had I put that tire pressure monitoring system on prior to that, I would have known that that tire was 50% low and I could have dealt with it a little bit sooner than when I actually realized that the tire was low when I pulled out of the campsite. So it's good to make sure you inspect your tires all the time and just make sure that there's no issues with them, especially as much driving as we do. And again, on BLM land, when we're going over rocks and rutted roads and things like that, you just wanna be really, really careful with those tires. I guess I can't stress it enough that we just need to make sure that we take care of the life of our tires. This is what's keeping our whole house together and on the road and safe. And so if anything is compromised with your tires, you could potentially have a flat tire or a blowout that could result in damage to your vehicle, your van, and bodily harm to yourself and maybe to others if you have a blowout. So it's just really, really important to be very careful. All right, so number six is the age of your tires. Well, I know this sounds weird. So let's say you bought your van or your rig in 2018, you would think that the age starts at 2018. However, those tires could have been sitting there in the warehouse for a year. Your tires should generally only be about three years old before you replace them, no matter when you purchase the van, no matter when they were installed. So you wanna make sure that if you're buying new tires, that you get tires that are pretty new and haven't been sitting around for a long time. And the way that you can know this is there's usually a four digit number on your tire the first two digits is the week that the tire was created and the last two digits is the year check that and make sure that the age of the tire is no more than three years if it is then your tire is starting to be compromised because of the age of the tire especially if it's been sitting out in the sun and if you're getting close to that three-year mark and you still have a lot of tread left just really look at the tire just keep inspecting it and make sure that it doesn't have any issues you're specifically going to look for cracks and tears and things like that that could compromise the tire so that was number six age of the tire all right number seven number seven is tire rotation this is extremely important a lot of people actually overlook this one because they think it's just not necessary or they haven't been driving the van or the vehicle for very long and you don't need to rotate those tires. So my general rule of thumb is to rotate the tires every time I get my oil changed. I actually get my oil changed at the dealership and they will generally charge me for rotating the tires. So I don't get my tires rotated there. I actually bought the tires that are on here from Discount Tire. They're the BF Goodrich KO2 tires. And since I bought it from them, they will actually rotate my tires for me for free. So I always go back to discount tire and have my tires rotated. Now, if I was in an area of the country and I needed to have my tires rotated and they didn't have a discount tire, of course, I'm going to go ahead and get them rotated wherever I'm at. But that's just kind of a little tip for you guys. If you're looking at getting new tires, go ahead and get it through a company that will do the tire rotation for free for you. And that way you can actually save some money. All right, so number eight is a little bit what we talked about before, but that is to have the air compressor. So again, this is the Vier air compressor. It is rated for my van or for RVs. So you wanna make sure you have an air compressor that will accommodate your larger tires on the RV that have a higher PSI rating. If you don't have the proper air compressor and it's only rated for normal like passenger vehicles, like smaller cars, you'll never be able to get your tire up to the PSI that it's supposed to be at. So make sure you look at that when you get an air compressor. I get the Vier, it's one of the best ones out there for RVs. And I do have links below to that in my description box in the pinned comment. So it's fairly small, but it's very strong. It has a gauge on it. And this is the coil cord. You can see I have not even used it yet. <laughs> uh, you attach these. I got mine to attach to my battery. Um, it's more powerful that way. And then the 
um, actual cord where you attach to your valve stem on your tire. So it's really simple. I've used another one of my RV friends had one just like this and I loved it. I had to use his one time. And so that's why I went with the Vier. But thankfully I haven't had to really use it. So of course it's important to have the air compressor with you because as much as we travel full time on the road, if you're out on BLM land or national forest land and your tire is flat, which has happened to me before, I had a friend who had the Vier and they helped me air my tire up and then I could get to discount tire to actually get the tire repaired. Of course, it was important for me to go ahead and air it up before I took off to discount tire because I had to drive like 20 miles to get to discount tire and I wanted to make sure that my tire had enough air to get there and I wouldn't potentially have a blowout or go completely flat on the way. The other thing too is there's going to be times when you might need to air down your tires and then have to fill them back up. What situation is that? Well, if you are in a sandy area and you get stuck, think about the beach or BLM land where there's a lot of sand down in Yuma, Arizona. That seems to happen quite frequently. There's very sandy areas and you can get stuck. So you would need to air your tires down a little bit to help give you some traction and some momentum to get out of that stuck situation. And then you would need to have a way to air it back up. So it's another reason to have an air compressor. All right, so the last one, number nine, is to make sure you have a tire pressure monitoring system. The reason why this is important are two things that we've already talked about earlier, which is monitoring your air pressure and also monitoring your temperature on your tires. So today I'm actually installing the Tire Minder tire pressure monitoring system. Again, my van didn't come with this type of a system already built in, so I have to install an external one. Tire Minder was absolutely amazing to send me their Tire Minder tire pressure monitoring system. Tire Minder has teamed up with Innovation Tire to provide you guys a discount. They are absolutely amazing they are giving you guys $20 off if you use the coupon code story chasing and click the link below to innovationtire.com and buy any system through them you don't have to buy of course just the one with four sensors if you have a dually truck then you're going to need the one with six sensors or if you have a trailer that you're pulling behind you need to make sure that you get the specific system that's for you based on the number of tires you have which means that's how many tire sensors that you actually need to get so Make sure you click that link below to get the tire minder system through them and your $20 off. So thank you tire minder for providing that exclusive discount for story chasing subscribers. And now we're going to actually install the tire minder monitoring system. So come on, let's go. So this is what tire minder actually gave us. We have a warranty card right here. We have our instruction book here. We have the booster here, which I don't think I'm actually going to need, but we're going to find out. We have the mount here for your dash. We have the actual monitor itself. The charging cable, which can be charged by USB. You also have the DC charger that you can plug into your cigarette lighter. We have the locking brackets, our sensors. We have four sensors since I only have four tires. And then they also supplied us with the batteries for the sensors. Looks like we actually have some extra batteries too, which is nice. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do to install the Tire Minder tire pressure monitoring system is we are going to install the batteries into these sensors before we even get out there. We're gonna take the sensor and we're gonna remove this black cap from the sensor. And you can see the battery will go inside there. Have the battery and we just slide it right in here and then we'll attach the cap again just want to make sure that's a snug fit attach the cap again and we're done and i'm going to do the rest of them all right i think we are ready to get started i have my monitor that we're going to use to train basically or to learn the sensors for each side left right back and front we have the four sensors and I have my instruction book in case I need it. But I think I've got a pretty good handle on it right now. We'll see how that goes. I've chosen to not use the locking nuts. It's optional. When I had my TPMS system before on the Class C, I didn't use them. It's supposed to be for anti-theft. I've never had anything like that stolen before. Hopefully it doesn't. I don't know why anybody would steal it. They would need this also. Um, I'm just choosing to not use it. So, all right, let's get started. The first thing we wanna do is actually turn on the monitor. And as you can see, it's in monitoring mode right now with that little M down here. We need it to be in learning mode. So we're gonna hit these top buttons here 
to change it to an L. And now you can see over here, it is looking for our front left sensor. So we're going to install that now. So the first thing you want to do is take off your cap from your tire and you're going to install the sensor as quickly as possible so you don't lose too much air. That actually found my sensor. It says my front tire is 59 PSI. My tires are actually supposed to be at 65 PSI for the front, 80 for the back. This means I need to air up my tires. Now that we've done the front left, we need to go to the next one. So we're gonna hit this right button here. As you can see, it goes over here to the front right. So we're gonna move over there. Again, we're gonna take the cap off. We're gonna add the sensor as quickly as possible to not let out too much air. So it did register that one. And it's at 55 PSI this time. Ooh, my tires are low. All right, let's go hit the toggle for the next one. Now we're going to the driver's side back tire. Again, we're gonna take off the cap. Put the sensor on. That one came up and showed that my tire is at 71 PSI and it should be at 80. So we're a little low on that one too. Next, we need to go to the next tire, the back right, but you'll see it toggles to the inner left. Well, that's if you have dualies. So we don't have dualies, we're gonna keep going. Putting the button right. Now it wants the dually inside tire on the right, which we don't have. One more over. We're going now to the back right tire. All right, so once again, we're going to remove the cap. We'll install the sensor. It did pick it up at 72 PSI, which is also low. <laughs> now that it's all programmed, we want to get back out of learning mode into monitoring mode. So we're going to hit the two buttons again. That gets us back into monitoring mode. And now it's like doing exactly what it says. It's monitoring the PSI of the tires. And if you hit this middle button here one time, we should get the temperature reading. So now we do have the temperature readings, which is quite interesting. The temperature is very different on the left side versus the right side. And part of the reason for that is the sun is coming up on the right side of my van. So it's gonna get a little warmer on that front right side. Well, how easy was that? That was super simple, wasn't it? And as you can see, had I had that tire pressure monitoring system on before, I would have known that my tires were a little lower than they should be. So I need to actually go air those up, which I'm going to do just in a moment. But I wanna thank you guys for being here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like this video if you like the content and share it, of course. Any of those things helps me to grow my channel and lets other people see these videos just like you. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video, which is coming up this Sunday. All right, guys, see you then. Bye.